COVID-19 has killed more than 300,000 people in the United States in 2020. But that's just the known death toll. Scientists and families who have lost their relatives across the country say the real figure is likely much higher. The, the total number of COVID deaths that we have in the U.S. is really an undercount of the full burden of the pandemic. When the CDC looked at how many more people had died nationwide this year compared to previous years, it found that COVID-19 only accounted for around two-thirds of those deaths, meaning up to 100,000 additional deaths hadn't been officially attributed to the pandemic. The number of additional deaths compared to previous years is known as excess deaths, and many experts see it as a starting point to determine the real death toll from the pandemic. And so when we look at uh, uh, 2020 and the COVID deaths, uh, there's clearly an excess mortality. And then the question is, what is that excess mortality made up of? That's the puzzle that statisticians, healthcare workers, and policymakers are all racing to solve. And it may take years. You know, these things are not as black and white as you might expect. But understanding exactly how people died can help governments fight the virus more effectively and determine things such as where to send vaccines first and whether lockdowns are effective. So how will we know how many people really died from COVID in America? I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. When the pandemic first hit the U.S. in February, epidemiologists like Dan Weinberger from Yale Public School of Health began comparing how many excess deaths they were seeing against the official COVID death figures. Especially early on, there was a pretty considerable gap between the number of reported COVID deaths and the total number of deaths that occurred. Professor Weinberger believes that this gap, which you can see here, is caused by two main factors. The first is a term called collateral deaths, where people have been killed not by the COVID virus, but have died due to the wider impacts of the pandemic. In Michigan, six hospitals have reached capacity this week. As hospitals are getting more and more overwhelmed by the pandemic. Simply the ability to care for people as well as we should simply goes away. In some cases, researchers say people have died because healthcare facilities were overwhelmed, or people simply wanted to avoid hospitals. Um, we know that especially early on in the pandemic, a lot of people were avoiding emergency care uh, for things like heart attacks and strokes, and that can certainly contribute to the number of people who are dying. The second category is COVID deaths that have been certified as something else. And Professor Weinberger believes it's this category that makes up the vast bulk of those non-COVID excess deaths. Determining the cause of death for a death certificate is a bit of an art. There are often multiple contributing factors. So you can imagine that someone gets an infection with COVID and then they develop pneumonia, perhaps have a heart attack and die. And then there's a question of what gets recorded as the underlying cause of death on the death certificate. One person who makes those decisions is Dr. James Gill, Connecticut's chief medical examiner. He has made it his mission to find COVID deaths that had been misclassified in his state. We don't want to be just arbitrary and say, well, if they've ever been COVID positive, we're going to make it a COVID death. No, you really have to look at the circumstances uh, and the clinical history and make sure that COVID-19 is still playing or played some kind of pathologic role in the death. Dr. Gill started testing bodies at funeral homes after seeing a slew of death certificates at the beginning of the pandemic, with pneumonia or respiratory failure listed as the cause. If um, it said uh, respiratory failure, that would give us a tip off that maybe this was a COVID death uh, that had been missed. His team performed some 175 postmortem COVID-19 swabs at funeral homes in his state. Uh, 110 tested positive uh, for COVID. We were able to identify dozens of deaths uh, that would not have been identified as, as a COVID death, uh, but for our investigation. Dr. Gill believes many COVID deaths may have been missed due to a shortage of available testing for both the dead and the living. Testing kits have become easier to find after shortages in May. We had trouble getting enough nasal pharyngeal swabs to test. I was calling up local hospitals saying, can you give me 20? Can you give me 25? Uh, they just weren't available. Unfortunately, again, people think of oh, the medical examiners, you're just dealing with dead people. You don't need to be a priority. We need to deal with the living. And I absolutely understand that and agree with that to a certain point. But as I, you know, but our work does affect the living as well. So how does understanding how people have died help us exactly? 
the disruptions caused by the pandemic are obviously unprecedented in, in recent history. Having a better understanding of the severity of the pandemic can allow us to make more informed choices and can allow the public to decide whether those decisions are justified or not. The excess deaths data can also give insights into how vaccines should be rolled out. You know, the excess deaths have particularly hit certain vulnerable populations, especially hard, um, certain lower, uh, lower income populations and communities of color. It can help in sort of planning for the next phase of the pandemic, thinking about who should be vaccinated first and where we might want to focus prevention efforts. As there are limited resources to fight the pandemic, this data is crucial to help identify high priority areas and inform policy decisions. In addition, you know, people just want to know, a family member, you want to know if your brother dies, your father dies, why did they die? You know, is this a COVID death? Uh, and, and so, you know, I hate to use the term closure, but that is something that I think helps people with their bereavement uh, and so they can understand. But for those seeking closure, the answers may still take time. While Professor Weinberger says data from this pandemic is still being analyzed at an unprecedented rate, it still typically takes years to account for those unknown excess deaths. Yeah, I think it is going to take some time with the current pandemic, just because we're going to have to be patient and wait for the data to be released. And, uh, you know, that could take another one to two years from now.